if you're new to DIY or you've just bought your own property, you may be wondering what tools you're going to need to do those jobs around the home. So today I'm going to tell you my top 10 essential tools that will allow you to do just about everything you're ever going to need and all for less than £100. And I can guarantee you it's absolutely none of these. It's all too easy these days to see people on YouTube using specialist fancy tools and then to get the feeling that you need those tools to be able to do the work around the home. And that's a long way from the truth because in reality a small number of the correct tools will cover you to do 95% of anything you'll come across as a DIYer or a homeowner. So this is my top 10 essential tools, most of which, if you look after properly, you'll still be using in 20 years' time. So we're going to start with the cheapest at number 10, which is... A scraper or putty knife. In fact, this isn't a putty knife. Putty knife's got a slightly different shaped end. But a lot of people still call these putty knives. This is a fairly narrow one. I like the narrow ones because it's easier to get into corners. And if you're using it for filling holes with a filler on a wall. The narrow one is easier to control and you use less material. But for three pounds, you can buy a pack of three in different widths, which will just about cover everything you're ever gonna need. For about the same amount of money at number nine is the classic Stanley knife, or probably people call them utility knives these days. Essentially, a Stanley knife is a knife that uses a blade looking a bit like that, that has two ends and you can actually swap them around. These classic ones are always good to use because they've got a retractable blade, which means once you finish using them, you can just retract them, put them in your pocket. This is the one that I carry on me all the time. It's a folding one that I like and it just fits in my pocket nice and easily. And these are an absolutely must have in a DIY sense. And I must admit, I'm, I use mine probably most days. That's why this one's always in my pocket. Number eight needs no introduction and is a classic hammer. You never know when you're gonna need a hammer. The only thing I would do is I would keep away from buying a hammer with a standard wooden shaft. At some point they tend to split or they disintegrate. I much prefer going for one for, with a fiberglass type shaft. I've had this one for a long long time and it was only a cheap one. This is like four or five pound and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. This will last a lifetime. So you never know when you're going to need it but when you do need it you need a hammer. At number seven is the general pair of pliers. Pliers are like the original multi-tool. They've got a section for gripping onto, they've got another section for grabbing nuts and then they've got another section for actually cutting through things like wire and rope and whatever. Sets of spanners are absolutely great but you need a set because you never really know what size nut you're going to have to tighten or loosen next. But from a DIY point of view, you don't need sets of spanners. All you really need is an adjustable spanner. So this one's about five pound. It adjusts from zero to about 25 millimeters. And you'll see by how clean my spanner set is here, how little I've actually used it. I've owned this one for maybe 15 years because essentially I always resort to the adjustable spanner. I can keep this in my tool belt and really it does the same job as all of these. We're into the top five now and at number five is a classic tape measure. Now every DIYer and homeowner I would suggest needs a tape measure. There's various different tape measures you can get. You can get thick eight meter tapes which are really good for outside and the bigger work. This is more of a specialist tape here. This is called the Vice Versa which is really good. It's got a nice clip top and bottom. It's actually printed on both sides as well. I would suggest that you aim to buy a five meter long tape rather than a three metre long tape. It's not that much more expensive and can be really useful if you're measuring the sizes of rooms and things like that. It doesn't matter what tape you get, they will all have an end that actually slides backwards and forwards, just a very small amount. And the amount it slides backwards and forwards is the same as the thickness of this end catch. And that means that if you're hooking it onto something or pushing against something, you still get the same reading. Before we go on, I'd just like to say that the Amazon links for all of the tools I'm showing today is in the description below the video. So if you don't believe how cheap some of these tools are, go and have a look 
and see it for yourself. So at number four is the common spirit level. Now this is a 600 millimeter long spirit level. You can get spirit levels very short, you can get them very long, but for the average DIYer, a 600 millimeter or two foot long spirit level is all you really need. And nine times out of the 10, you're gonna be using this to put up pictures and paintings at home. Do you know how to check a spirit level? I'll show you how to check a spirit level. Put it on any surface and check the bubble. I can see here the bubble is just past this first black line. Turn around the spirit level and put it in the same position and it should be, the bubble should be in exactly the same position as it was to start with. And if it's not in the same position, then you have a problem. So that's how you check a spirit level. Unless you have a true known level surface, then it's easy, you just put it on that level surface. But you don't know the surface is level without checking it with the spirit level. But then you don't know if the level is correct. You see the problem we have? At number three is the classic handsaw. And at about 12 pounds for something like this, this will cut everything from timber to plastics to pipes and everything in between. Now really you don't need a circular saw if you're only doing small amounts of work. They're handy to have, but they're expensive if you're only gonna use them once in a blue moon. Something like this, you can have in your toolbox all the time. And unless you're gonna be using it every day or try to cut a piece of steel, this is going to keep sharp for some time to come. And one little tip that most people don't know is nearly on all saws they make the plastic handle at exact 90 degrees to the top of the blade. So you can actually use this as a square. And at number two is the common screwdriver, or should I say screwdriver set? Because I would highly recommend when buying screwdrivers never to just buy one or two. Because I guarantee you when you come to actually need one, the one that you bought is never the one that you need. So they sell them in six packs of around about six. You can see I've got different sets here that are all mixed up and probably spread all over the place now. I've picked out a set that I would purchase if I needed another set of screwdrivers and I put that link in the description below. But I think at the moment I'm pretty well covered. And at number one of my top 10 list is the cordless drill or combi drill or drill driver as some people like to call it. Unlike most power tools that generally replicate what you can do by hand but a lot quicker, the cordless drill is unique insofar as if you're going to drill into masonry for instance, you're going to need an electric drill one way or the other anyway. If you then add that to the standard drilling function where it drills really well into timber and plastic, then add on top of that the fact that it's essentially an electric screwdriver that's also got a clutch function and it hasn't got any cables. This is a unique piece of kit and probably the first power tool I would suggest anyone should buy. I think I've probably used it on every project I've worked on and I don't think I've published a video so far that I didn't at some point use a cordless drill in and that's simply because they're just so useful and so easy to use around the house. This is a DeWalt 18 volt version, it's more of a high-end cordless drill. I wouldn't necessarily suggest that the first time DIY goes and purchases something like this, because if you're only going to use it half a dozen times a year, there's plenty of versions on the market starting at £35-£40 that also come with a few drill bits and screwdriver bits that will do exactly what you need in your first couple of years of working around the house and doing some DIY. So a few things to look out for when you're buying a cordless drill. Firstly, I think it's really important to have a hammer action, which means you can drill into masonry. It's really handy to have this clutch function, which means that you can also set this, which limits how far you drive screws into timber. It's really handy to have a low and a high gear, and it doesn't matter what drill you're looking at, make sure it comes with a battery because a lot of drills these days are actually sold what they call bare, which means they don't come with a battery. So if you see a really good make at an unbelievably good price, then you'll probably find it doesn't come with a battery. So I'm just adding up the cost of the top 10 tools according to the Amazon links in the description below the video, times 3.1415927 equals. And as I said earlier, you can get the whole lot for less than £100 or $150, as long as you stick with a sensible cordless drill rather than go for the Devault, which is going to be about another 60, 70 quid on top. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please check out the other ones on my channel and please subscribe. So until next week, I'll see you next time. Now, where's my laser level? <laughs>